In the last module, we got familiar with some core DevOps concepts. We also learned about what Jenkins is and what advantages it provides. In this module, we will get our hands dirty and get started with Jenkins. We will install the prerequisites for Jenkins and then continue on with installation and configuration of Jenkins and see it in action. We will also configure the essential settings and some add-ons to run our Jenkins service. Finally, we will walk through the features which Jenkins provides. Amongst these features is also the Build Pipeline view. We will review this pipeline view with the help of Build Pipeline add-in. We will learn about the purpose and benefits of this pipeline view. So let's get started. First of all, let's review our environment which we are going to use to install our Jenkins instance. Here we have logged into our workstation where we will install our Jenkins instance. Let's review it now. This physical machine is a Windows machine. It has Oracle VirtualBox installed on it for running virtual machines. We will use a Linux virtual machine to install and run our Jenkins server. Installing, configuring, and running VirtualBox and virtual machines is a very straightforward process. But in case you need any help, please refer to the URL for documentation. In this particular instance, the Linux flavor we are using is CentOS version 7. In order to make our journey more comfortable, we will make use of SSH sessions to connect and run commands on our Linux virtual machine. For this, we will use a free and easy to use SSH tool called PuTTY. If you are working on a Linux or Mac OS machine with an alternate SSH tool, you can use that instead. The main objective is that you should be able to log into your Linux instance via SSH. We have already downloaded and installed PuTTY. Once again, the process of installation is pretty straightforward. You can simply Google for PuTTY and follow the instructions to install it. In order to configure our SSH session via PuTTY, all you need to input is the IP address of our Linux machine. And to get your IP address for our Linux instance, you need to execute IPA on your Linux instance. And here is our IP address, 192.168.0.101. You need to input it down here in the PuTTY connection configuration dialog. Please note the default port for SSH is 22. Once it is configured like so, we will click on Open to establish our SSH connection. Now, since we have connected to this machine for the first time, SSH is warning us. Let's click Yes on this dialog and proceed further. Here we will log in as the root user. Since this is just an academic exercise, we are using root for convenience purposes. But it is recommended that for real world cases, you use a user with appropriate permissions and avoid logging in as the root user. We will use the root and the password that we configured during the installation of our Linux instance. Okay, now we are logged on to our Linux system. Now let's start with the installation process for Jenkins. Next, in order to install Jenkins on your Linux instance, you will need to ensure that Java has been installed on your Linux instance, because this is a necessary prerequisite for installing and running Jenkins. We will visit this step shortly. The most comfortable way to install Jenkins is to go to the official website, wiki.jenkinsci.org. Here on the installation page, you can click on the link for your particular OS to get detailed instructions to proceed further. We are using CentOS, which is compatible with the Red Hat distribution of Linux. So we will click on that link. And here we can see all the necessary steps that we need to execute to install our Jenkins service. Here is an additional important note about CentOS distribution and Java. Some versions of CentOS have their own version of Java installed. In order to avoid any compatibility issues, Jenkins Wiki suggests that we check whether we have the correct version of Java installed or not. Let's check and verify now. We will execute this command to verify the version of Java, java-version. Okay, as you can see, we don't have any Java version installed on this machine. The minimum version of Java required for Jenkins is Java 7. Jenkins Wiki conveniently also provides the necessary command to install Java. Let's execute this now. 
yum install java dash 1.7.0 dash open jdk let's wait for the installation to finish after the installation is complete we can clear our screen now let's verify whether we have java installed or not okay cool this verifies that the required version of Java is installed. The next step is to configure our own Java home directory environment variable. To do this, we just need to know where our Java runtime is installed. By default on our CentOS system, Java is installed in forward slash user forward slash lib forward slash JVM directory. Let's navigate to that directory. Inside this directory, there is another subdirectory where our specific version of JDK is installed. This could be slightly different for you depending on the exact version of JDK you installed. And here it is. Here is our Java underscore home. Most programs which need Java runtime will need knowledge about this path. To make that possible, we typically set up this path in an environment variable called Java underscore home. Now to set up our Java underscore home environment variable for our current logged on user, which is the root user, we need to edit our bash underscore profile file. For that, we will execute the command vi tilde forward slash dot bash underscore profile. Here vi is the text editor we will use to edit our bash profile. And the tilde character represents our home directory, which is where our bash underscore profile lives. Now here, we need to execute these next steps. First of all, we need to export and set Java underscore home variable. The value for this variable has to be the complete path where our Java runtime is installed. Let's copy it from here and paste it right here in our bash profile file. Next, we need to add this path to our path variable as well. To do that, we will just append our Java home variable with a dollar sign with a semicolon to the already configured path variable. Since our actual runtime is installed under the bin directory, we will also append bin to our Java underscore home path. Excellent. So that completes the process of setting up our Java home environment variable. For this change to take effect, let's reload our profile. We will execute su dash. Now let's print out the value of our Java underscore home environment variable by executing echo dollar sign Java underscore home. Okay, as you can see, our Java underscore home has been set up properly. Now our Java runtime will be available to our entire Linux system. Okay guys, since all the prerequisite details have been taken care of, let's install Jenkins. And since Jenkins wiki is so helpful, all the necessary steps for Jenkins installation are also listed here. All we need is to just copy these commands, paste into our Linux command prompt, and execute them in sequence. We do not need sudo, because we are already logged in as the root user. Okay, it is complaining that we don't have wget command available on this Linux machine. We need to install that as well. Let's install it via yum install. We will execute yum install wget. Now after wget installation is complete, let's try our Jenkins install step again. Okay, cool. Seems like that worked. With this command, we have added our Jenkins repository to the list of yum repositories for installing Linux packages. Next, we need to import the Jenkins key. This will tell yum exactly which version of the software and dependencies which need to be installed. Finally, after taking care of these steps, we can install Jenkins with a simple yum install command. We will confirm that we do want to download and install Jenkins and press Y here. Let's allow a few moments for the installation files to be downloaded and installed. After the installation is complete, we can go back to the wiki and see what we need to do next. Looks like we need to start Jenkins. On our CentOS Linux instance, we have a great utility called Service, which can start or stop our Jenkins instance. All you need to do is copy and execute this command. 
Service, Jenkins, start. Okay, great. Our Jenkins has started. Excellent. Now, obviously, it will not be very convenient if you have to start Jenkins manually every time. It will be great if the service started automatically as our Linux system boots up. This next command achieves just that. Let's copy and execute this command. CHK config Jenkins OK. With this command, your Jenkins will start automatically anytime we start our Linux operating system. Great! Let's verify the status of Jenkins service once again. We will execute the command service Jenkins status. And as you can see, Jenkins is active and running now. We are now ready to access Jenkins to manage and configure it. Let's move further. Since this is a vanilla version of CentOS version 7, this particular Linux machine doesn't have any graphical interface at all. That is why the only way for us to access the Jenkins user interface is to navigate to our Jenkins instance from our Windows host machine using a web browser. But this virtual machine has been installed with bridge adapter mode. That is why the only way for us to access our Jenkins service is to manage special host files in Windows. To modify that file, we will launch command prompt on our Windows host with administrator privileges and navigate to Windows system directory. Backslash drivers backslash etc. Here to edit our host file, we will open it up with Notepad. This host file helps the Windows system in DNS and IP resolution for our host. All we need is to get our IP address from our Linux machine and input it here in our host file. Also, to map this IP address, we need to get our host name from our Linux machine. We can get it by executing the command hostname, which in our case is jenkins.noodle.tetra, and also paste it here in our host file. Good. Now our Windows host can easily resolve the IP addresses for our Linux machine. Now, if we navigate to this URL, jenkins.noodle.tetra, in our browser window, it will direct us to the virtual machine. We will save and close our host file now. Great! Let's go to our browser and continue our configuration process. We will navigate to our Jenkins host name, with the default port for Jenkins, which is 8080. Okay, great! We are presented with this wizard for configuring our Jenkins instance. Because this is our fresh installation of Jenkins, in order to proceed further, we need to unlock it by supplying Jenkins Administrator Password. Jenkins configures a default initial administrator password, which can be found at this location. We will copy this path here and go back to our SSH session for our Linux machine and open this file. And here is the initial password. Now click on continue. Okay, excellent. Now our Jenkins instance has been unlocked and we can proceed further. Next, Jenkins is presenting us with two options for configuring our Jenkins instance. Install suggested plugins. This means Jenkins will configure our instance with the recommended plugins. And the second option is select plugins to install, which naturally provides more control over configuration. For now, let's select the Select Plugins to Install so that you can get a behind the scenes look at all the plugins that are available for Jenkins. Jenkins has a vast community which has contributed hundreds of plugins to its vast ecosystem. As you can see, there are quite a few of them and each one listed here has its own description. The selected plugins are the plugins which get installed when we select the Install Suggested Plugins option in the installation wizard. These are the most useful and popular plugins which Jenkins community has selected to be installed by default. These are the plugins we generally need to run necessary DevOps pipelines in typical environments. Of course, after installing these default plugins, we are free to install more plugins as per our requirements. We will focus on the most important and the most original plugins, which will be instrumental in running and using our Jenkins server effectively. Let's start with dashboard view. Basically, all this plugin does is add visual diagrams to your jobs. 
For instance, if you have many jobs and they take a while to run, and you find it easier to visualize the process with some graphical statistic, then this dashboard view will provide that functionality to you. The most important plugin in the context of this course is the Pipeline plugin for continuous delivery. Pipeline plugin appeared in Jenkins version 1.5. At the very beginning, it was just a simple Groovy script which provided basic management for Jenkins jobs, but since that, it has matured into a much more useful plugin. The next plugin is Build Pipeline Plugin. The plugin provides a graphical interface for managing pipelines. Let's select this plugin for our Jenkins install as well. Using this plugin, we will not need to write any codes or scripts to build our pipelines. With the help of this plugin, we can manage our jobs via the graphical interface it provides, which is much more user friendly. Also, we need to install Copy Artifact Plugin because only this plugin allows us to manage specific continuous integration and continuous delivery jobs. Source code management plugins are rather useful too. Here we select the plugin suitable for our respective source code management tools. In our case, we will use GitLab or GitHub. Maybe we will also use Bitbucket plugin. So let's select all these plugins. Next, the plugins that we'd select are SSH plugin and Publish over SSH plugin. Both these plugins are used to execute some commands over SSH to remote host or to pass some files over to SSH. We will install all these necessary plugins as we start building our build pipeline and we need that specific add-on. For now, to move forward efficiently, we will go back and select Install Suggested Plugins option. At this point, Jenkins will download all the necessary dependencies from the internet. That is why you must make sure that your Jenkins machine is connected to the internet. Let's wait and allow Jenkins to install necessary installation files before continuing further. After the installation of all dependencies, our Jenkins instance is now ready. Great, now we have successfully installed Jenkins and are ready to use it and manage it.